Welcome back, folks, for day two of the Dell Futurist Community Cup. I'm your host, Cap Nadia, and I'm joined by once again Kiran Shades, Leo Nujibel, and our expert analyst and former pro, Nikhil SK Brutality. We've had one awesome day of 10 streamers and 10 cafe teams competing as everybody starts their journey in esports. Dell Futurist as a platform enables new age careers driven by technology so that youth across India can follow their passions like art, photography, filmmaking, app development, and now esports and streaming as well. These guys are all competing in four days of epic PUBG action just for you guys that you can watch across Facebook or you can even watch the streamers themselves. We had an exciting day one. SK Shade, take us through what happened. So Danny, yes, I mean, undisputed right now, sitting at a nice lead, I'd say, but then he still has to battle it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Miramar Sandhawk day two is going to be interesting, like I said, because we did discuss a lot about the terrain changes. We did discuss a lot about the strategies because, you know, a lot of the teams yesterday were playing on the edges of the map. And then, you know, we had 15 teams in phase four. So if we have that sort of exciting round here and Miramar at phase four, I'm going to be stoked to see that happen and uh, again like you know we saw some big plays from accelerate we saw some big plays from uh, amit kolzara from ir i don't know man action pack there's, there's like too many favorites at this point in time but i do want to see some of the other big teams you know i want to see sick warriors team i want to see lxg's home team you know step it up today and then maybe bump up the scoreboard again and shuffle it around yep. yeah I think uh, day one pretty much went how I expected to, the first two maps. Uh, first map, of course, Erangel, where uh, teams had a little bit of info about uh, how the other squads are going to be playing. And we did see, in fact, the victory going to the squad that actually uh, did the scouting well in the uh, early parts of that round. They went, landed in Lepovka. Luckily, they had the circle going in their favor. Beautiful rotation through Milta Power and eventually towards uh, that south eastern side of Milta where they managed to somehow make it through into where a zone where there was I think four squads it's LXG team Danny S's team Rotti's team even two players from Sick Warrior and eventually beautiful victory there and uh, second map of course Sandhawk I think that was again first time we've seen it competitively played in India so we saw a lot of fights going down a lot and of yeah kills. a lot of yeah. individual prowess being shown accelerate there at the end what a clutch that man showed for a fact that he is good with everything right yeah. you had that M24 not coming in and then the kill secure with the M249 and then the final nade it was, coming in yeah. for the clutch. It was a 1v3. I mean, brilliantly played. Let's let's jump on to Miramar because the game has gone live and oh my god, this circle right now because everyone just as I predicted yesterday moved completely away from the middle. There's only about three teams. There's Rotti's Den and we have team number 20. Uh, who are basically around the middle of the map and then we see this drastic shift right all the way to the bo bottom left of the map so the, the sir, only so the plane path was actually down the middle yeah right? straight down the middle right so it went e, from yeah just top of the it basically e went through san martin yeah. and uh, hacienda all the way to los leones and i'm surprised that nobody's taken los leones right mm -hmm. there's just one team that's the lxg team that's around los leones that's the good part that's the god buildings as, as we like to call it which have the, the maximum loot but then if you look at the bottom left of the map there's like this huge cluster of teams right we got robo's team they're all on vehicles yeah so if we quickly switch over to the other observer uh you've actually got some people still parachuting down uh you've got wrong pass driving through robo squad got in uh so it's going to be uh, one initial fight that we can expect in the first few minutes and earlier on, in fact, I think one of the LXG one team members actually ran his own teammate over with a car. Uh, yeah, I, I think that is pretty much a signature of this tournament, right? We had that happen, I think, a couple of times yesterday already. And uh, day two seems like it's going to be no different. Mm -hmm. And we see, I think this is the other team, right? All the way in uh, Puerto Pariso, which is the bottom right of the map, we have team number 18 and uh, team number 10. Uh, which is Google X God versus uh, GG2. So this is, I think, the closest fight we're going to see in the first few minutes because everyone else is scattered around. Uh, and this area spe especially is going to favor Google X God's team because they got the little buildings, they've got the God buildings, whereas you see the whole of GG2 right now pushing out towards backtrack. And it all depends if Oromlof is going to spot them out. But it seems like they're all moving together. They Let's just look at what sort of loot they're carrying. So we... They do have an SKS on them, on Amrul. They have two SKSs, whoa. They have a shotgun and they got a micro Uzi. So we've got two snipers and then he gets a scar as well. So these guys are decently kitted. Uh, 
first aid, they just have about two first aids uh, between the four of them. And we see Elo kind of spotting out already. So they, they have some sort of an idea that, hey, there is another team with them. It's just who's going to you know, hit the first shot and get the first knock, which is going to start creating all the panic. Yep, and it's also promising to see so many uh, six axes, eight axes being picked up early with the sniper rifles, where it, and it is uh, Miramar where uh, you do see a lot of long range duels happen long drawn throughout the entire map. And uh, looking at the top four teams, uh, I'd say from yesterday, uh, Hydra, Roti, Danny S, Wiki. Regardless of the order in which the fights were taken, it was pretty much one of these squads eliminating the other. I think in, in from map one, it was Hydra, Roti, Danny S, all of them fighting each other. And it just so happens Wiki managed to sneak his squad in there with Wade Z and eventually get the cleanup and the victory. And in the second one, we saw on uh, Sandhawk, it was Roti who was managing to uh, get the better of Wiki's squad while Danny S eliminated Hydra. So it's pretty much come down to these four kind of having like their small little mini match going on. Let's see how that uh, kind of plays out here on Miramar. So, you know, just as we were talking about the other squads, Robo seems to have drawn first blood this map. So, good for him. He's playing with a man down, but he did take out one of uh, Rotti's den, MLG, right? He, it's one of Rotti's den's teammates, uh, who we saw in the vehicles around. So, he, he's got the first kill of the game. Props to this guy playing with a man down. And they've, they've actually got, got a decent Los Higos drop and it's going to be a while before they even like, you know, move around to this section and they just have like two other members to deal with. I think yeah. it should be a piece of cake. Um, like, the, you know, the first airdrop has dropped. Uh, it is west of Los Leones. Nobody near it. And we've got an AUG suppressor, full level 3 kit, uh, including the armor helmet and backpack. So that's going to be a big, big jackpot for whoever decides to get there in time. And we did see quite a bit of squads yesterday uh, actually going for the airdrops as well in those matches. And uh, I think it was the um, M249 itself that yeah. eventually won the game as well on Sandhawk. So, SK, do you think it's going to be something teams here are going to try risking going for those airdrops this early in the tournament? I, I think they should risk it because, see, look, we're, we're, having, we're having a look at Wikirax who's making that big rotation into the top end of the map, right? So this is a long journey for them. And you see their kits. They've got a lot of first aids and stuff on Wikirax. They just got like an AK, no first aids on map. And he's making a rotation with pretty much level one armor and nothing else, right? And they need, so teams like this who's going to like enter the circle, they right? see accelerate. If they spot the drop, that's a good that's a good way because it's empty, it's uncontested. These are the drops that you need to go for early game, knowing that hey, you have the positional advantage. If you spotted the drop, it's a bigger, it's like a level three kit just straight off the bat with an AUG, possibly one of the most powerful uh, weapons in the game. But like we see, the middle of the map again, you know, following day one, it's completely empty. I don't I don't know what kind yeah. of like it's it's kind of weird because a lot of teams like you see team number five right. Blitz zone, they're all the way in the north side of the map and the zone's pushing. So that's two vehicles with possibly a fuel can that's gonna, you know, require for them to like make it all the way here. Then we have Frosty Purge, we have real rot, uh, Rotties Den, we've got ITGC, we've got team number 13, Sunny Mai. So they all have to make these big rotations. And guess what? Once that happens, everyone's gonna end up around the Picardo region, uh, end up around the hills. And we're gonna see a lot more fights happen in the next, I think, in the next two phases. I'm actually interested in what Hydra is going to be up to because they've got a very good spot here. Uh, they're at a crossroad where I think almost everybody has to cross in here. Cold Zera, he's got uh, the entire LXC squad in front of him. He's down two of them and blows up the vehicle and gets the full squad wipe there. As I mentioned, they lost uh, you know, some momentum early on because they actually wasted a lot of time picking up one of their team members after uh, you know, friendly fire road rage. Uh, and now they drove straight into Cold Zera. SK mentioned this yesterday as well. Miramar, not one of the uh, maps where you want to be driving out as well. Lots of terrain, you end up easily getting picked off. And there we see the LXZ squad going down early in. We also discussed the fact that whether the squads should actually go ahead and uh, utilize the middle of the circle early on, a place where they can just straight up take a compound and hold that spot. Uh, we saw a lot of edge camping and eventually squads who are rotating in late into the circle just getting picked off straight up for the fact that they were moving into four or five squads. So let's see if some of the squads have actually seen the words from yesterday and have adjusted accordingly. Yeah, we see like uh, Wikirax's squad made the rotation, uh, have made it to the left of the map. So you want to be around this area. There's a lot of hills. 
There's like the whole of Chumacera and the second drop is, is also in the map. So we have this region and we see still about like eight teams outside. We have Sick Warrior right here. He's going to enter in pretty late. We have Apis who's making his way down north of the map. So the south region, Prison seems pretty empty. I think Rongpaz is probably like the most looted right now. Let's let's take a look at the second drop and uh, see what's uh, what's in it. Yep. Once again, you know, nobody around the drop for miles, and we got an arm, perfect weapon for Miramar. If you ask me, if you've got somebody who can handle a sniper rifle, you give him the arm and you let him go to work. That's at least 20 guaranteed down. And Pro Doge, I think, falls to his death somewhere in the distance. SK, where is the action happening? So I'm actually looking at Sadie Boy right now because he is separated from his team and he's miles away. So you see, the, I think he's just scouting. His, yeah, he's, yeah. Gone, he's taken the high ground and he's completely like got all vision of Chumasera. He's got vision all around him. But there is one stray member of team two, which is uh, the LXG team, who's actually come and scouted out a decent compound just yeah. Just left of you know Sadie, uh, Sadie Boy right now. That is in fact Nandy who did uh, split away from the rest of his team that I'm on scouting duty. Same with Sadie Boy. We also I think saw one of the players Blitzkrieg from uh, Rotty team number three also scouting in that general direction. So more or less all these teams know for a fact that there are going to be squads moving and into Sadie these And Boy spotting out Joker. Two hits, 78 hit points. That was a headshot straight off the bat. Now he knows someone's there. He knows Joker is going to be hidden there. He's going to take shots at the rest of the members of LXG. And now this is this is going to be this is going to be crazy because now he's going to basically isolate Joker by taking off that vehicle, taking the tires off the buggy, and he's going to mark that out for the rest of his team to possibly like push in. Yeah, but they've and actually got Cosmic Whitey's squad just driving up behind him, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they actually drove past the first airdrop right now. Did not see it because it's FPP and this is what they were looking at unfortunately. It was literally three feet from them yeah. and they missed out the AUG suppressor and level three kit. But now they're coming up on Sadie Boy. They're literally a couple of hundred meters from him. There's no way he hasn't heard the car SK. Let's see what Sadie Boy is looking at right now. This can turn into potential disaster for Cosmic Squad if they go by without looking at him. And in the distance right now, we have Kakashi who's taken down weights Waiting for the next peak on Ghostly Boy and he whiffs it completely. So Kakashi was alone, no teammates close by and we've got Adi trying to watch his back but there oh. we go. Pops a shot, misses. He's got the entirety of Wikirex and team to go and eventually will connect in by long range 3x with the M4. He can get some serious damage done here. You can see that left and right dance off coming in but yeah. it does look like they will safely make it back into the buildings there. Great suppressing fire there by Adi, you know, ensures his teammate made our life because he realized it's a bridge. They're going to have to come forward or jump down to finish him. And uh, doesn't matter what weapon he has, he just has to scare them into thinking that it's going to be a big fight. And now he's going to town on their vehicle, making sure there is no escape for them. In the other side of the map, we're going to try and see some fights while you guys watch Adi, uh, you know, pick off some tires. And Aram Olaf manages to get a couple of knocks as well onto a couple of players on Cosmic Fighty Cruiser and Co. will get cleaned up. That is going to be the entirety of Team 16 off the server early on. Yep, unfortunate for Cosmic Whitey, you know, uh, if, if you do not have a compound and you're driving, there's always a chance that you're going to be driving into someone unless you get that position early on. And here, Google X Gods team, uh, they made Cosmic Whitey pay and picked up the three kills. Yeah, we in fact expected them to uh, run up to Danny Yes's team there, Sadie Boy and Co. But instead, it was uh, Google X Squad. And I think All right, here's here's another incident that uh, happened here. Ghostly Boy seems to have finished and then knocked himself yeah. out at the edge of the ridge. But hey, Wiki Rex, in here to rescue his teammate, gonna res him. On, it's like a weird ledge. I think he fell off mm -hmm. uh, the side of the cliff. And took too much damage. Yeah, and he took way too much damage. So. That's fine, he's he's completely fine. Let's take an aerial look at the map and see how the circle has shifted in uh, phase two right now. Yeah, we're still heading towards the center of the circle, but now we've got a lot more teams. I think if you stick around Ghostly Boy a little longer, you've got, uh, I think... Yeah, that is team number five. Yeah, Blitz that's Blitz coming, in, coming in from above them. And that's going to be a huge vantage point if they can just go towards the edge and start spotting them out. 
Yeah, looks like uh, Team 11 though is going to slowly make their way more inwards there and they're just going to barely miss out on the incoming uh, Blitz team there. So they should be able to make it back into the circle. Find a nice little spot there. Yeah. All of Google X got here driving by LXG. Uh, Joker deciding not to shoot at the first car, but he spotted out Endeavor, does a bit of damage, does a lot of damage, he's gonna have to reload, he's got 360 bullets, he's gonna try and put that to use, uh, the vehicles have stopped, they're gonna be looking to take this fight as Joker is going to town, but doesn't manage to do anything more than a little bit of damage onto the second vehicle and its, well, passengers. Yeah, kind of anticlimactic there. He did have that small window of opportunity. Yeah, there. I think I think if his teammates backed him up with a spray down, they would have yeah. had at least two other players. But I think Orom, uh, Olaf is actually going to hunt. He's pushing towards the LXG team, right? He's got the three kills. He's he's warmed up and he actually looking for blood now. He's he's left. He's dished his vehicle as soon as he's got shot. Uh, not not healthy at the moment, but seems like he's. He's their on-ground scout, which is not a smart move. I mean, they, they did the stop the vehicle for him, but he didn't get in. So I wonder what's going on in uh, Oromolov's head right now. Yeah, here we on the other side, we've got a full firing squad of Team Arps. I think the shooting pandas, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, going to town on Zone Cafe too. They've got them from high ground. They've got to move towards them. They're stuck behind ridges, ridges sorry, and on the other side. You've got one of the strongest teams in the game, Rotti's Den. If they can find these guys under fire, they can just pick them off from behind for easy kills. Yep, Arps and Co. are not going are going to be a little. Uh, it's a set from uh, the result from map number two yesterday. That was pretty much their game to win there. Three v three v one at one point of time. We even had Danius knocked down there, but uh, eventually they got outplayed there at the end, and they're going to be looking to bounce back strong here on the MR. And in the distance, we do lose one of our streamers, Google X God, Sadie Boy, the solo scout again picks off. Google X got uh, while he was driving by. I think he got stuck in the terrain. Just what I was talking about. You see the busted up Mirado behind uh, Sadie Boy, and that's exactly what happened. Like a lot of trees, he gets hit, and then Sadie Boy, you know, just pulls out the AK and then easy clap, just takes him out and gonna take his bike back. Gets that five extra points for his team, and he's gonna again relocate. So this is a very good playstyle if you think about it. Not a lot of people are doing this, but he is completely away from his team. Do you see the distance that he's away from, right? And he is sort of going towards the whole of IR right now, but I think he's going to hold the hill. Let's see if he's going to hold the hill or if he's going to dive into the compound. Because if he goes straight into that compound, he is not coming back alive. Indeed. And, uh, and it seems that's exactly what he's going to do right now. Let's see if... Yep, he gets spotted by Hydra. And easy takedown right there. Unfortunate. Hey, guys. Terrain kill again. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Easy kill for uh, Hydra Flick, and he's gonna take out, and he's gonna hear uh, the whole of Sick Warrior squad as well going down. Pulls out the SKS, couple of taps, but misses, and now they're gonna try taking down 27 hit points. It's actually a good shot, good long distance hit, but seems like Sick Warrior's team is gonna, you know, move away to safety. But uh, and uh, Hydra is gonna hold this top out. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Sequoia's team, in fact, didn't really have the best of days yesterday. Uh, first now, I think they're shooting at the rest of Sadie Boy's squad as Accelerate, Danny S and Roy are all driving by. They're going to get caught between four squads now, actually. ITGC coming from the south. Uh, you got Squad 9, that would be uh, Gaming Grounds from Pune on the west. Hydra on the north. Northwest, you've got uh, Blitz Zone. So that's a lot of teams all around Accelerate. That being said, though, look straight at the middle of the circle. Shots going down. Team number 14 does manage to find Rotti. They're moving out. And it should be, Anon Panda should be able to uh, uh, deboard safely. And they don't really have any compound to go into. There is the entirety of Sick yeah. Warriors team and there. And Sait actually is stuck between the whole of Axel and squad. Let's see if he's going to peek out. I don't think this is the smartest move, but he is like in a 1v4 situation right there, unless uh, I think Kadak is gonna like move up to high ground and then give him back up. This is a very high profile fight because you've got Sick Warrior, you've got Rotti, uh, you've got Arps. These are all contenders, and we got fall damage knockdowns for Squad 7. That is not what Rotti Cafe's second team wanted. Say, taking a bit of damage there from Arps and Co. This is going to be crazy. Adi gets knocked down there by Scourge in the same fight. This is going to be a fight that decides how this match goes. As Hades finds Karaklonda, this is not looking good for 
uh, Dotty's den because they're in the worst position. They're exposed from all sides. Yeah, they're in a world of trouble there. Sikwari even manages to get the knock onto Scourge there. We see Axeling actually having moved compounds there into the next building. I think he's already setting up for that flank play onto uh, Sick Warriors team there, squad number 19, while uh, Rotti is pretty much going to be all on his own up ahead. Now we look at Ops right now. Quick three taps, gets about 70 hit points on Sick Warrior right now. And he's going to go back. So again, four top contenders all around like in a 200 or 300 meter radius. This is this is exciting right now. Yep, the classic standoff coming in there for uh, three different squads. That being said though, we're seeing a lot of kills coming yep, in. Yep, if we switch over, Joker's just gone to town on squad 10 from GG2 and he, we've lost so many of them uh, in the blue zone because they got not finished. Blaze is the only one standing. This is what happens. Uh, we're in phase four, if you stay out too long, at the end of the day, the damage does stack up. I think there was a couple of players getting... Oh, the Blaze gets spotted out as well. Wild Spray coming in, Johnny. And yeah, oh, he oh, will he, be he eventually... He the nade here, but then he realized Johnny Walker finished the job. As Sick Warrior takes down Arps and Aditya on Axel. And this is going nuts over there as Sick and Warrior meanwhile, squad. meanwhile, we see the whole of IR squad as well, right behind Rotties. And they don't spot him at, at all. Does Prajwal look at Sid? Yep, they're trying to uh, safely disengage there from this standoff, but little do they know they do have Hydra above. Prajwal spots out Sid, but uh, with that mini long range, he's taking some damage himself here. And uh, probably not the wisest of decision to take this fight without the rest of his teammates there as well to supplement him. He's getting quite a bit of damage done in though onto Sid. But that being said, this is buying time for the rest of Rotti there to reposition. They do have a couple of spots behind them who are pretty much stuck in a battle of their own. Yeah, that that's... is Sick Warrior and uh, Arp squads. And it's gone from long range battles across the road to a close quarters combat as Adi got taken on a little while ago, but Captain Pons picked him up and now Sick Warrior knows where everybody else is. Now Scourge gets taken down. Arumlov with a lot of kills there in the distance, guys. This is heating up. 16 teams, 47 members still alive. Map 1 of the Delft Futurist Community Cup on Day 2. And Oromolov does get the kill onto Arconix from uh, Gamerex's team there as uh, Hydra and Co. They're still, I think, kind of pondering whether they really want to get into the thick of things here. They did spot out a few players from uh, Rotti's Den, but... Uh, yeah, it looks like they want to get into the fight here. Meanwhile, we're seeing kills coming in. Wiki Rex as well as I'm a ghostly boy getting a kill in onto uh, a player from squad number nine. That's GG1. So more squads getting involved into this action here. Uh, Captain. We see Hydra here with two quick peeks. He's going to spot out Panda, but he's going to actually move out. He's going to play a defensive position. I think Rotti squad is stuck in between three different squads and everyone seems to like shoot at them right now. Because yep. they are in a little defilade. Yeah, we spoke about Rotti's team being in the worst position out of the three squads there. Two of which are still alive and Rotti's the one in trouble, but they're still getting knocked in the fight. There we go. Prajwal cleaning up house on uh, Rotti's den right now, all the way from... I mean, they just picked up all four kills, but then Hydra gets taken down by Joker. Yep, that's going to be the uh, LXG squad too. And coming in, the Nate! Double slam dunk coming in onto Rickster and Robo and uh, Robo squad. I think they still. Yeah, no, I think Robo got wiped. Yep, that should be a wipe for Robo squad. Right now, we're looking at ITGC. They're moving in on Wikidex's squad. Now, Wikidex, one of the top contenders right now, one of the strongest teams to take it home. ITGC, they just wiped out a squad. Uh, they spotted out Ghostly Boy, but Ghostly Boy seen them as well. But beautiful taps are coming out from Beish Pajit himself as he gets a knock on Ghostly Boy. Now they're pushing up. Panic has set in as Wades is going to be looking to provide some suppressive yeah, fire. Yeah, we can switch Wades, Wades right now. He's got a full vision on these guys coming straight down the hill. He's going to spot out God at War. Yeah, but that yep. beautiful smoke actually allowed ITGC to push down. Uh, but the rest of his squad is open. He needs to utilize this push up and get the trade onto Wades before everybody else gets in position. I think Wiki Rex and Mab are also trying to peak now as ITGC must now take it upon himself to try and finish the job. 
Yeah, I think Wade even manages to spot him on the edge of the smoke there. ITGC, that opportunity might just have gone by. He's taking a lot of fire. 28, 18, oh, 5, 8, and Wade with there. a clean spray right there. Unnecessary there from ITGC, exposing himself to a lot of that damage and gets taken down. And meanwhile, we're seeing squad number three going with up against squad number four. The two zone squads going up against each other. And I think zone two is pretty much done for vacuum. Just too much damage coming in. He's just going to stand his ground, take the fight there. No option whatsoever. And uh, yeah, that's another squad biting the dust. Now you got Amit Kolzera in the distance, going to finish off Joker. And we got Johnny Walker actually just stuck in a haystack and they have no clue right yeah, now. And just Nandy is the only one in the compound. Yeah, what's interesting is you've got God at War from ITGC squad picking off Viper X from the other side. You know, we saw ITGC get taken down, but God at War is still alive. And now he's going to be looking at trying to maybe get a little bit on the scoreboard. He sees uh, the rest of Wikirex's squad looting up his former teammates or what's left of them. But is he going to fire and try and get some cheeky kills? He decides not to, but he's getting shot at from the other side. He has been found out. Man, trigger discipline didn't really uh, help too many players. And he's only got well. a bandage from what I can see. Unless yeah. it's a spectator glitch, but no, only a bandage. So he's going to go up to maybe 45 HP at best with his... Uh, you know, boost and now he's And then we see Sunny Meister in here in the distance actually gonna play gatekeeper for Hydra Flick. Takes out uh, one of the... I think he took out Prajwal right now. Oh, beautiful pick there by Godly, uh, God of War. He picks up I am Ghostly Boy. Goes in for the finish. Done that ammunition. Is this going to be disaster? Oh my God. God of War could have played Spoil Sport for Wikidex's squad, but... Oh, he did get the kill. He yeah, he did get the did kill. Did enough damage to get the kill. Slight delay there on what I saw. Beautiful stuff. Wiki Rex down to three members, and now they're going to be heading straight for Blitz across the road. Dread Wreck. He's going to see Vades coming from a mile away. Starts taking damage from Vades. Vades has been on point with his medium range fights so far, and he's going to look to continue that. Yep, the entirety of yesterday, Blitz were caught in this two split only and uh, they were trying to uh, jiggle peek in, in, uh, yesterday on Sanok as well. Looks like they're going to have to do something similar here if they are to outsmart Wades, who's had a very good uh, day one. Now we see Dreadrack right here, mini 4x taking shots at Wades. He's going to spot out Wades, couple of hits, but oh my god, that was like three whiffs back to back. And I think he's going to bleed out pretty fast now because it is his second knock. And NGU is not going to push in and save him. So Wade's picking up another kill on Dreadrek. Yep, Nade. he's going to instead uh, decide to go for the nade and probably just reposition there. He's going to give up on Dreadrek who will eventually get taken down. And now I think NGU is pretty much just going to uh, try and sneak it out and get those one or two positions above on the leaderboard. Yeah, and what's happening here is a very interesting development as we've got LXG2 right behind Sick Warrior Squad who's right next to Amit Kolzera and we know the damage this man can do even if he is alone. So he's trying to get the position points but everyone's going to be forced to move. The question is, who's going to see who? I think a nade came out first as Nandi's going to get spotted and taken down by Aditya who's going to go for the spray down and completely wipe LXG2. Two free kills there for Sick Warrior. Now Kolzera, he knows this information. He heard the shots. Is he going to take his vehicle and get out of there or is he going to remain on foot? I don't think he wants to attract attention. But the question is, if somebody goes on top of that ridge, will they spot him? Yep, he can go on top of that ridge. There's also Sunny Meister who's waiting on the far western side. He should be able to see uh, Cole Zera I think Cole spots out uh, Sunny Meister right now at the haystack. He's going to go and hunt him down. He, I don't think Sunny spotted him at all. Yeah, let's switch to the 1v1 cam. We can see what both players are doing. Uh, it's going to be intense how this one works out. Codes are pushing oh, in. Oh, Adi spots out. Adi spoiled sport. <laughs> Adi spots out Amit there. Just as he was getting ready to take down Sunny Meister. And, uh, and Sunny was like, you know what? I won't move. I'm fine. Thank you. But here's the thing, he's going to have to be running towards Adi now. Sick Warrior Squad, they've got a great position on the hill there. Sunny decides to prone right at the edge of the circle. He doesn't want any of this action. He's like, I want those position points. It's worth way more than an extra 5 points for me at this point. Yep. Because one position extra is 10 points. One kill is just 5. 
Yeah, and he can play spoil sport for some of these teams as well. Oh, oh, oh the board actually coming field. at Sunny Miser now. Maybe next time he gets spotted out by Fear S from Zone. Alright, let's take a look at who all's left. We've got six teams, 14 members. Uh, we got Squad 3, that's Zone 1 with uh, four members. So that's a very, very strong squad. And we got Sick Warrior with uh, three members. That's a top tier squad there. Danny S with just him. Wikirex with three. Arps with two. And then Blitz with just one. I think it is once again heavily in favor, favor of the streamers now at we this see point. Sick Warrior spotting out uh, Z Fears right now. And the circle actually favoring Z Fears. Yep, Zone has got a zone very, very good opportunity there. here. Yeah, pretty much everyone getting involved in their long-range battles. SK, looking at the positions, who do you think is going to be the favorite here to take Miramar? I think Zone's actually giving up their position right now. They should be taking the higher ground in, you know, securing that spot. But they seem to have spotted out Sick Warrior and they don't want to let go. And in the distance, I think we see another fight brewing. Yep, Wikidex gets knocked by Arps from long range as Wades goes and finishes NGU. And that's going to be one more kill moving up their tally to eight. And we're down to just five teams now. Yep, I think team number 11 and 14 uh, have been going at it long range for a, for quite a bit now. Arps yeah, manages Arps to bust knows the door. Exactly, because he's the one who took down Wikidex in the first place. Uh, and now he's got the perfect position to shoot them. But while he's doing that, he's exposed to Sick Warrior squad. In fact, Adi has spotted out Wikidex's yep. squad as well. And he's going to town on them from high ground. Yeah, we see Adi right here. It's a 1v3. I don't know if he knows his three people there, but he's got Captain Pawns by his side. Captain Pawn's going to push in with that 3x, but Wikirex going to tap from the distance, which is going to make... Oh, he gets knocked down in the smoke, and that's going to be the end of Wikirex's journey so far. He's and not we gonna see Adi right now, easy spray, takes, wipes out uh, Wikirex's In fact, squad. no, it's Arps who stole the kills. Look oh at this kill God. feed. Arps <laughs> with the kill onto Wikirex and Vades. Aditya is going to feel so hard done by that, but he's running straight into zone squad now. And this is going to be the one that decides how this match ends. Normag has not been spotted out. He knocks out Adi. It's down to him and Captain Pons. Great shot there by beautiful Sick shot by Warrior Captain Pons right helps there. Helps as well. He's going to smoke out Adi and try and pick him up. But the smoke bounces up Adi's head. Yeah, he's going to go for the revive there. Sick Warrior and Co. Didn't, didn't manage to get the kills there. But I think that was well deserved there for Arps and Co. They've been taking that long range duel like forever. Sick Warrior goes for the spray down long range with the 3x and the AR. Get some damage in on to Mudki. I think he does get the knock in as well there. At the end, three players knocked down. And uh, that's going to be backs against the wall here for Zoom. Yeah, let's take a look at how they're lining up in this final circle. We've got Arps in the only shack in the zone. Fear has got a mountain to climb, literally. His Much. teammates are all down. He's gotten the smoke onto FDG. Uh, and we see Adi trying to finish up the whole zone squad. He's picking up the kills. He has a slight idea where Zephyrs is. So it is going to favor Sick Warrior's team right now. Three members, so, three members up, all full HP. And I think Sikwad is the only one that doesn't have a helmet on him. Yep, Arps getting into position early. We've seen him do good damage at distance uh, with his sniper. So if Sik doesn't have a helmet, that now might turn into a Adi problem. We see Adi and Captain Pawn's going to push in towards FGD. Let's see if this gonna if this trade off's going to happen. Yep, they're moving in for the kill there. Adi and Captain Pawn smokes go goes down. FD can he make his way out? I think he does safely make his way out. Though Adi is looking the wrong Beautiful way. Beautiful headshot from Adi there. And one man remaining for zone. Yep, FDG, he, he, I think he's still got the element of surprise. He threw a flash. I think he threw a flash. Nope. Oh, Clean up by work. Captain Pons. Two teams, guys, two teams remaining. Three on one. Will Arps be able to clutch this? Arps, this man is going to have to go God mode here. I mean, if he is to clutch this up against. Sick Warrior and Co. So far, he does have the lion's share of kills for his team, but these are three people that are not to be taken lightly. I think he should just sit below this rock and pray. Yep, he's gonna have to try and isolate this into three individual duels. He's gonna find the one onto Sick Warrior and he gets the knock in as well. Two more to go, both coming in from the same direction. Can he get the fight? That's the last one, first one. He gets the knock on the same yes, Oh my god. god! What a play, Arps! My man explodes in and just wipes squad number 19 off the server. If they couldn't win it on Sanok, boy, oh boy, what a way to win it here on Miramar.
I think that is making up for how they kind of potatoed it back in Sanok. That is redemption, if I ever saw it. Arps with a huge triple kill, 3v1. Beautiful work, he took out Sikh Warrior first and then changed his position. They were still moving to the right side of the rock and he went in from the left, almost potatoed his first shot there. But he did have a level 3 helmet, I think that played a big part because all Sikh Warrior squad could see is that level 3 helmet and I think they put, put in a good amount of bullets in it but you know it's a level 3 helmet against an AR and it's gonna take way more than that but Unfortunate at Adi, he played out of his mind in those last two circles but just wasn't able to close, you know, because he looked, like you said, he looked to the left where Sikh Warrior probably called him out but then Ops had already repositioned and then Captain Pons, uh, again, is un unfortunate. I think that ridge played a big part. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a weird ridge, weird angle that you can't really aim the, down. The guy behind could not yeah. see him while he yeah. took down the first guy. Yep. And that is what really helped Ops. Huge play there coming in as they take game one of the Dell Futurist Community Cup Day 2 matches. Miramar goes to ARPS. Second, we've got Sikh Warriors squad uh, with, uh, I think, nine kills there. Then we've got Zone Cafe. Yeah. Right? Zone's first team with six kills. So it's not like they, hey, they camped their way up there. Six kills is a good amount to have. Then we've got Danny S. You know what's interesting? Danny S is always in and around the top five. No, so he lost three of his squad mm -hmm. members very early and he stayed in the shack that Ops took over, right? So he was just prone there the whole time playing for position. Smart play because this fourth place is sort of guaranteeing that, hey, he might still be at the top of the leaderboard after uh, game number three on day two. And then rounding up the top five, we got Wikirex again. Again, you know, these top three, top four teams from the day one standing still in the top five. So they're not going to be too hurt. Uh, when we tally up the scores before map two, folks, what an exciting matchup we've had in the Dell Futures Community Cup. Day two started off with a bang with some amazing plays all around, but I think Arps takes, Arps the, takes cake the cake with yeah. that yep, crazy definitely. 3v1 clutch. That was Miramar. We're going to be back in a little while as all these streamers and players continue their esports journey, being enabled by Dell Futurist, allowing people to pursue their passions and careers driven by technology. Map 2 Sanhok coming in just a little while. Don't go anywhere.